YouTube fam, it's your girl Jessie, and today we're reviewing Hungry Root. I'm going to give you my final thoughts. I tried two boxes of Hungry Root, and um, I tried the smaller box. So their price point is set up by the size of the box. They offer a small box for $6.99, $69.99, sorry, medium box for $99.99, and a large box for $129.99. So, I actually, you know what, I'm not sure about that 99 cents. It might just be the number without the 99 cents, but I'll let you guys know. I will fill you in on that. When I first signed up to the website, I find, found it a little bit difficult to navigate towards because the website was kind of clunky, it was hard to navigate through. So don't forget to check out my video if you're interested in Hungry Root on how I learned to navigate through it. I want you guys to not have the struggle I had trying to figure out how to navigate through the website. It was kind of difficult to figure out like how to cancel or skip for the week. E even though they have a little prompt, it just wasn't like, I feel like as user friendly, the website was a little clunky for me, for my taste. Let's go ahead and just get into my full review. I ordered a total of five meals over the two boxes in the first box I had a spinach artichoke risotto I rated that meal a 3.5 it was actually really really good I was surprised it was creamy it had different notes like it was it had high points it had low points like when I say different points and high points low points I mean like it had acid it had a little bit of pepper it had a little bit of salt so it, the corn was sweet so it just played and danced around with the different flavors that you're supposed to fill in your mouth when you're eating a meal, which I liked. So I gave it a 3.5. So why a 3.5 if I really liked it? It's just basically one goulash, if you, if you think of it like that. So if people like that, then of course they would give it a higher rating. But me, I kind of like to have different textures, like different components. I didn't have different textures in my actual meal, although the flavors were diverse in that meal. So I rated it a 3.5. The next meal I had in that same first box was a broccoli basil yuba bowl. Um, it was like broccoli rice, with yuba noodles and like some sort of basil basil pesto I think and I rated that meal a one um, it was not my favorite meal I felt like it tasted okay it wasn't bad but it felt like a side dish like it felt like it was just not the star of the show it just fell short for a meal I mean I'm ordering these meal kits so that I could eat a meal right as opposed to buying something from the grocery store for dinner and it just wasn't a meal for me so I gave it a one because it tasted okay and the next meal I had was the Calabri corn pasta so it's Calabri noodles which is like I think it's a vegetable or root it's some sort of plant it's a vegetable pasta and it had like the same corn salsa and I think it had like a, the, a pesto base so I rated that meal a 1.5 because the, I, I felt like it was okay but again I felt like it was more of a side dish and not a full-on dish whereas the first meal I talked about the spinach artichoke I felt like it could be actually the star of the show I just would have liked to have maybe some crunch here you know maybe like a little dumpling or something there you know just something to bring it all together and I really was off put by the Calabri noodle texture it's just not my thing so maybe if somebody else that really likes Calabri noodles or maybe that's what I shouldn't have tried would have liked this meal and this meal kit more but I gave it a 1.5 oh also in that first box I got brownies and cookies which were not bad they were vegan brownies vegan cookie dough and um, I I thought they were fine I wasn't like oh I'm in love with them I have to order more maybe if I was vegan I would feel like that but I thought they were okay they weren't something that I would say hey I need more of but they weren't like something I'm like oh I don't I'm good on that so they were fine they don't taste like regular cookies though people like to say oh these taste just like the regular cookies no they didn't they tasted vegan okay but they were fine then in the second box I got 
the two meals, I only got two meals and then I had a whole bunch of different components. The first meal I got was like a creamy peanut Yuba skillet. I, when I tasted it, I told you guys it was really peanutty and it was pretty okay or was, I probably even said it was pretty good. I, when I was eating it, the more I ate it, the more disgusted I felt and I actually spat it out and end up throwing it away. I hated that meal. Like I couldn't get through the meal. I rated it a zero, a whopping zero. End of story. The last meal I, I made from Hungry Root was a pesto salmon calabri noodles. So that meal actually tasted okay. I The pesto was fine, the salmon was fine. I, again, I was off put by the calabri noodles. It's just, it, I don't like it. Like, I don't know, like, it's, I don't like it, guys. It wasn't, I mean, for my vegans out there, do you guys like calabri noodles? I, I didn't like it at all. Um, but the salmon actually tastes really good. And I love salmon, so hey, it could be just me. So I rated it a two, because again, side dish, not a main course. My overall ratings for taste, when you add all of those together, ended up coming to a 1.6. <sighs> I just, when I order a milk kit, I want a, a meal, like a dinner. I don't want to feel like I'm just eating side dishes. So that's my number one critique of Hungry Root. So likability, I actually thought they were okay. I do like their different components, but I don't really love their website. I don't love when I signed up. It was really difficult for me to like figure out how I wanted to schedule my first meal. I had to email and I hate that. I was supposed to click, 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 click. All right, oh, I wanna change something. Click, 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 done. That brought down the likability. Also, I did not love the meal. And I found it hard to navigate to even figure out how many meals I could get. So because of that, I gave the likability of Hungry Root a two. The cost, I give it a one. And I give it a one because for $69, I just don't feel like that is my money's worth. So I gave it a one in terms of cost. I don't feel like I was getting my money's worth. The one point that I gave it for cost is because, you know, their sauces are actually pretty good. In conjunction with everything else, I don't feel like it's a meal, but individual components are pretty okay so um it's worth something um and then time cooking so this is where hungry root shines okay this is gonna save you hungry root most of the meals said that they took about 10 minutes some eight some maybe slightly over 10 and their advertising is that all their meals are about 10 minutes or less right let me tell you guys all their meals are about 10 minutes or less all. There was no meal that I made that took me more than 10 minutes to make. So they got a five, a five out of five. I don't think any company has ever gotten a five out of five from me on terms of time to cook. But caveat, you're just putting those ingredients together in a pan and you're stirring it up. So who do I think Hungry Root is good for? I think it's really good for people who want more of a plant-based diet that super are super minimalist. Like you just want this small little like meal that doesn't have a whole lot of components, not a lot of ingredients. And maybe you're not like picky about your taste. It's like simple and in your vegan um, or plant-based diet. Okay, there's other vegan or plant-based meal kits, for instance, purple carrot. And purple carrot will have a meal that will have, let's say, um, like uh, kale, and then you got the carrots, and then you got the quinoa, and, and this is all in one meal, and you got so much going on, and then when you plate it, it's like a full-on meal. So if you don't need all that, and you just want like a simple one pan, quick dish, boom, 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 Hungry Root is for you. This is not even a category I normally talk about, but it's something that came in my mind when I was subjected to eating Hungry Root. If I was 
trying to lose weight for a wedding or something in that nature, I kept coming back to would I try Hungry Root? Because everything is super portion controlled, but yet you're full. So those are like good points. It's portion control, but you're full. It's not like having a smoothie where you're like, oh, I'm on a diet, so I'm gonna just drink this smoothie and then I'm just gonna feel hungry for the rest of the day. No, you'd be pretty much okay until time for your next meal with hungry root meals, I mean. But for some people that aren't so picky with taste and you want portion control meals, I think hungry root is good for you. I don't think it's good for people who are learning to cook I don't think it's good for foodies, definitely not. I don't think it's good for people who want variety in their meal. They do have different meals which make it seem like that, but they're based off the same three core ingredients and they have a list. So the bulk of the dish, they have noodles, they have cauliflower rice, they have broccoli rice, they have Brussels sprouts, then they have a whole list of different sauces and then they have a whole list of different add-ins. And so you have those same three like categories, I would say, and then you just pick one from each and put it together. So that is what I think about Hungry Root. And when I go over my ratings again, like ability two, cost one, taste 1 1.5, and time for cooking is actually a five out of five. So that brings Hungry Root's total average to 2.4, which is actually probably the lowest score that I've given so far. I don't hate Hungry Root. It's just not for me, and I don't think it's for a lot of people out there. So, so anyways, if you guys 